Hey, welcome everyone to my first tutorial video on New World Horizon. Thanks for checking it out. I'm going to try to keep the video kind of short, but just enough info to help people get started uh, where players have ran into some difficulties. So I'm going to start off with character selection. Uh, the characters are ordered, I believe, what would be most difficult, probably easiest. And we'll take a look at those, kind of give the benefits of each. First is the adventure character, the archaeologist, definitely end game. Uh, Frank Shanks are the prospector, a miner. Madam Bloom, a biologist, a farmer. Max Connor, the outlaw, definitely a rugged character. And Thomas Fisher, the rancher, outdoorsman. Uh, we're going to start off with the outlaw character because he's probably the toughest. And I'm going to start off getting the first quest chain started. And without a quest log, the quests are easily overlooked. We'll start with this guy. And. He starts off giving you a warning about this northern cove where he says there's some crocodile. Be careful out there. Well, that's actually a quest. I'm going to go take a look at that. And then I'll actually get a whole quest chain started with the British Navy. So it is a good, it's a good starting area to start leveling. And we're going to go over there. Looks like I'm just fumbling through the buttons. Um, right click, right pulls the sword, left click pulls the weapon, and... Uh, we do have, if you press the O, you'll bring up this interface key. As you see, it is very key heavy. Uh, we don't have bindings uh, for that very reason. There's just so much, but I did add a keyboard for European keyboard or various keyboard setups. And then we do also have it for a gaming controller, which is still in the works, still not nailed down. The easiest way to play is with the gaming mouse, which you'll see a lot of in my videos. I do do the 12th button gaming mouse which does kind of allow one-handed play directional combat while moving and is the easiest method of play uh, special thanks to Anthony Zai from Logitech Gaming uh, for that and yeah, we'll just head on over to the alligator area uh, the area is kind of off on its own so it's safe the zone is fairly safe you do they are kind of off in their own little area and their damage is uh, scalable, so at low level, they won't be just completely tearing you apart. They're fairly easy, but they are will steadily do more damage as your level gets higher. So a good starting area to get a few levels. Pull out the telescope and case the place out there. You can see that little feature. And let's just get right to it. And we use a uh, gun here. And you see me sweeping my thumb across those lower keys, the Z, the X, and Z. So that gives you lower attacks, attacks low to the ground. And they also, after the opponent has died, you can um, use those keys to skin uh, an animal and get some meat off of it. And that's always good for food to restore health. And we'll see. It's pretty much those low keys. So definitely a good start uh, using that thumb key. And get you in the habit of doing at least those those heavy low attacks, uh, kind of getting you started. If you get that mastered, uh, then you can easily start integrating the roundhouse, the Q and the E, and then your faster strikes, the one, two, and three keys. And uh, we do have a lot of miscellaneous skills that'll pop up on those one, two, and three keys when the sword is not equipped, uh, but. There you go, we've got a level here, and uh, doing some skinning. Boy, I thought I'd get some food from one of these guys here. You see the AI is fairly simple though. Uh, an easy way to grab a few levels, and you'll find if you do get a few levels, it will make a lot of the other skills a lot easier. You just do try to jump right into uh, mining, or fishing, or lumbering. You'll find that having that couple levels does make everything a little easier. Uh, second stop, the fisherman. We'll take a look at some fishing, buy some worms, buy a fishing pole. And you can just press the P and it'll pull up your fishing pole. Unless your sword is equipped, you know, right click, put that away. Pull the fishing pole, then right click will cast, as well as snag. Now there is, uh, we had some difficulty with fishing. Some people would just see the little nibble like that and then right click and you see it doesn't, just reels the thing in. Uh, you do have to wait a little bit when that bobber goes under, so just be patient. 
as you see there's some empty cast you do lose your worm so um, be patient and I think I'll just run down here and we'll check out the canoe do some fishing from it uh, new feature added I don't have the oars added yet I'm still up in the air on it as I usually do have something else in my hand a gun or a fishing pole or uh, being a lantern uh, we do have some basic animations in place, but we do have uh, natural water buoyancy, you'll see on this. A little different than the buoyancy system you've seen in the past on our larger ships, where we're actually running around in the deck and loading cannons and stuff. Uh, we did get natural buoyancy working with the uh, canoe, and it is pretty awesome. And I do a little fishing here, and I think it takes me a few tries to uh, get a fish is this the one? Actually, it's probably no. I that was probably it. And horrible editing. Actually, this isn't edited. I'm just uh, cycling through some of my clips I shot throughout the day. I figure I'd just put them together. Don't do a whole lot of video editing. You uh, could tell by the. Uh, website or even the Steam page, you see a lot of the stuff is outdated. I definitely do need to stay on keeping everything up to date with that as well as a full time job. Uh, there we go, we did catch a fish in the canoe, a good sized dinner fish, and we will go cook him up on the campfire. And then we can use that for meat, for food, to restore our health. And, and that's a good start, so you've seen how we can skin. Uh, now, whether you, uh, depending on the size of the fish, it will give you uh, various amounts of raw meat as well as uh, skinning deer and goat and ram and cow and pig. There's all sorts of animals to skin. You'll get various amounts of meat, alligator, frog, uh, lots of things to skin. And you can just come over here to the campfire and press the F key which typically will eat but it's standing in front of a campfire will cook any raw meat and there you go we'll take a look at the inventory and you'll see it is now as <coughs> cooked meat and this road heads on up the trail to Emerald Peaks but there is a new training guy and this guy here is a if we talk to this NPC we can kind of set the difficulty and this is a trainer he won't do any damage to you and you can practice kind of swinging with him and I just redid him for those of you who have been playing and are just checking it out you see it uh, used to be a dude and he used to talk to you while you were battling and kind of give you tips but as I did have all the extra trainer code stacked on my typical dialogue that so much of my AI was using all my townsfolk and a lot of the native where they can talk to you, be enemies, be friends with you. Um, I just had all that trainer code piggyback on all sorts of AI that did me too. So I just basically went back and rewrote this character. And uh, still needs a little work, I think, coming out of the stun. And I think we do have some uh, uh, little overlap on the, the root bone position. But... Uh, with a few little tweaks, it'll let you practice uh, some moves and uh, get good at that and, you know, get some practice. Now, we did choose uh, the other character because I was going to do some lumberjacking and this character is the outdoorsman. And at level one, you will find that any of the harvesting skills are very tough. It doesn't let you just jump right in and make money. Um, it is almost faster for you to get some levels and do some adventuring before uh, just jumping right in and just doing resource grind gathering because that's no fun. So we're going to run down here to the smith and we will buy a uh, uh, pickaxe. I think I actually buy a well, I buy a hatchet, and I buy the nice one, I buy the 25 gold piece hatchet, because at level 1, um, yeah, tree chopping can be time consuming. Uh, weapon that are here. Uh, five different uh, available upgrades in this town, and then in the trade city, when you do finally get a boat and get off of this island, uh, you start 
venturing out, exploring some of the other islands. Uh, there's more weapons and tools available. Uh, but in my first excursion out, I did run into this archer who got a lucky shot. Now, uh, typically when you do get hit uh, with an arrow, uh, you know, it'll stick in your arm or in your leg, slow you down, cause some damage. But with a perfect shot, a archer can kill you in one blow. Uh, these things will lead your fire. Uh, they do register angle velocity forward to back, but, you know, side to side, as you can see. And they will laugh at you after they one-shot you in the head. Something like that. Uh, so I ended up uh, just lumberjacking this small tree in town just to demonstrate. And it did take me quite a bit longer than those five chops at level one, even with the shiny hatchet. So can't state enough. Get some levels. Plenty of quests to do. Definitely do the Wilbur quest. Uh, and in town, as soon as you enter, I think there's a, a guard captain uh, to the right who will have you hunting some of the cannibals around town uh, as a quest. Also, uh, there is a small church over by the smith. And she will uh, have a quest to hunt rats and snakes. And then she will send you to the constable who can as well uh, send you to uh, collect some bounties and get some cash there. So plenty of early quests. Uh, as you do head into the wild, uh, these guys, uh, you can use these tower guards here. If you do get overwhelmed, these tower guards will kill any native. Uh, that does try to enter the town, so if you do get in a pinch, you can use those. And you do want to be careful around the areas where, you'll see those spikes there, around areas where they build. Uh, here the spikes were in the open on the road, but typically they are in the grass around the area. Uh, there are little tents that they, you'll see them constructing. And um, we're heading off to the mine, as you see, which is just south of town and I probably should have pulled my lantern out before jumping into the mine because it does kind of get dark really drastically as you see there and then when I pull the lantern uh, another one of your starting tools the lantern as well as the telescope the compass the canteen it starts with a little ammunition and a little food but uh, lots of underground exploration and it doesn't really show really well on the video so I'll try not to spend too much time underground uh, there are some crypts and caverns and stuff I'll show you a little of that but uh, one thing you can do you know, once you do start really uh, pulling down the firewood you start becoming a good boy forester um, you know you can it does make exploration a little easier I think I still end up doing it one hand with a torch or with the lantern out but just to show you what it looks like because I do actually get a few gems uh, and these gems these emeralds can be uh, traded in for gold uh, once you uh, do get that British quest line opened up a little bit uh, you do hunt those crocodiles and then the guy says hey I want you to go hunt a deer and you bring the deer back to the harbor master and then he's your friend and does open up uh, some trading for you and your fellow uh, captain uh, captain Stu, uh, the guy who does bring you here and you'll read a little bit about him in the storyline um, let you come in here and do a little mining and see if there you know how mining works I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna show you this character uh, probably the trickiest write off to get started uh, because she does uh, doesn't really have the skills right off the get for mining or foresting or lumberjacking or hunting uh, her skills are farming and uh, that uh, requires a farm and we're going to kind of show you uh, eventually like say after doing some quests getting some levels uh, we're going to want to come to this place here and we will buy a house deed and I think they are 25 gold you can buy it from this guy and once you get the house deed it does pop up I think I uh, we can come out here now you're not allowed to build 
in the city zone around Emerald. Um, but um, you can, I, I went one zone here to the north. And this is a zone called the Cradle. And we'll see about some house placement here. I don't want this video to run long, so I'll try to get this house placed. And uh, show you at least a couple of the local dungeons and some of the areas once you do get the house set up then you do have a good base of operations you do have the ability to save your game out here and a dinner table to eat at and get extra health um, and really get started uh, I guess the save game and whenever you do load game it will uh, load you in your house so uh, definitely getting the house set up and most beneficial to this character is because it does allow farming as this character does really good at farming now I am pressing the button here but it won't even place the house because it's on level um, and if it is level and something is blocking it'll appear red and then quickly disappear uh, if you don't like the placement I'm pressing the B button here to build um, if you don't like the placement you can just simply press the B again and your uh, construction area will disappear but there we go uh, and if you do like it uh, you do like the area then you can just walk up to this front base of the house and you'll get a hammer icon and I think it starts right here on this corner edge here at least for the first couple of house pieces I know when you build the deck to the second floor uh, that you'll, be, you'll get the hammer icon on that side but right there uh, and if you press the number one key which the hammer lies on it'll tell you you're out of lumber but I do do a quick cycle through of uh, house construction here. Uh, the video is a little dated uh, before our uh, environment, our foliage patch, the animated foliage. You can see this is our original foliage, but that show a build and we'll quickly get back into the game. And this is my save game that I've been playing. I've probably got about 15, 20 hours in this game. See, I've got some levels stacked up and I've got the house built and a good base of operations. And we're a couple levels deep in, uh, built up on a mountain edge above one of the native tribes, uh, which we are gaining slowly reputation in, and we can trade uh, pelts with them, and we are doing additional quests to gain the reputation of other tribesmen um, as well. And doing a little farming, now the new foliage just recently added, and I can see now that it does cover up the farming a little bit those uh, dirt mounds that we used to have when digging are a little more concealed with the new tall grass so the tall grass uh, definitely improving the visuals but uh, definitely things to work on say we are still early access uh, still both searching for bugs and pushing new boundaries and and fixing a lot of stuff so uh, we got some stuff planted and there you go the house you see on the left there we got some stored lumber still some extra lumber and some meat some fish hanging which is uncooked meat and we'll also see some of the seed there and also some grass some of the new tall foliage poking through the floor I did expect some of that so we'll look for a, a foliage cleanup um, I think we had just redid this on the last or the first foliage update we had. We raised the house up a little bit, but this foliage even taller. And I don't think I'm going to raise it. I think I'm actually going to have to break down and uh, do a little ray tracing and grab all those instance messages and uh, take care of those. But I'm going to go ahead and pop upstairs uh, where it's dry. And you'll see the bed where we can sleep at. And the biggest benefit is the bed will give us a sleep icon and allow us a free game save so that we can uh, start uh, steadily uh, increasing our progress, giving us a little base of operations from here. We can start uh, working our boosting our reputation of the area and really having an area to call home as we that we can explore from. Um, and just on the island and at least till we can uh, get uh, to that first boat and we can get off the island and then we can start 
uh, doing some trading and stuff like that and we'll show that in a later video uh, seen a little rabbit go by and probably the new tall foliage is going to be making rabbit hunting a little more difficult uh, deer shouldn't be a problem though we do have a telescope I think spotting the rabbit from a hilltop are going to be easier but it might be a little easier to pursue them on sword looks like I've got a coyote coming so um, I see some of those low attacks again. Uh, see those thumb sweeps. Uh, roundhouses do work. It is a little taller. You see we did use that Q and E key. And uh, a little hunting there. And we're going to head on down the hill. And I'll show you uh, where we're located. Uh, we're just I think north of the cradle zone. And this is the farming tribe. And we can gain reputation them. The starting quest, the chain, it actually starts at the church in town. Say so you hunt the snakes and then the rats and then she'll send you the constable who will uh, have you attack, uh, hunt down some bandits and get some rewards. And then after the bandits, you can start to make peace with the last remnants of the fishing tribe. And uh, once you do that, then your reputation. Uh, so definitely... Uh, uh, definitely a uh, bit lengthy. Uh, I'm at level 12 and I think I'm getting to the point where I'm close to being off the island though my gold uh, doesn't show it yet. Uh, we we have made a few trips into the uh, lower uh, crypts and uh, a few of the caverns. I think I tried to do some tree chopping and uh, just north of the Indian village. I'll show the dungeon. There's the dungeon entrance there, but also uh, the guard captain uh, One of the quests that he did, uh, Has for you is going to be this is going to be the first real big boss. He's going to have you kill And he does have a lot of hit points and he is really big, but um, He is actually killable which will show you he does a little slow He is uh, at least at my level. He does miss a lot. I am able to uh, actually miss a lot of blows that will probably crush me at a higher level but you know we, 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 he's still uh, I'll probably go ahead don't have a whole lot of video left and show you uh, the big rig um, still fairly new we added this uh, here recently in the last couple of weeks uh, needs a little work but uh, Probably the first boss uh, that we'll fight, and this will uh, get us entrance into the first dungeon crypt. And I think there is as well uh, lots of surprises down in there. And let's see, I had to take a little break and just peel off and eat a little food. And as long as you do have food and water. And you can fill, refill your canteen, any fresh water. Uh, you can't do it at the ocean, but like any of the ponds or lakes, just go stand in the water and press that water key and it will refill your canteen. Also, uh, uh, at the Trade City, uh, a keg is available uh, and it'll install in your house and it'll allow you to refill your canteen from inside your house. And... We'll probably show that in a later video uh, when we can pick up some of the newer items, uh, some of the later items as we uh, do get off the island. Uh, there we go. Finally bringing him down and wrapping that up. And I'll show you a little of uh, what some of these dungeons are. The dungeons do look a little dark. Uh, they don't really go to video that well um, and I'll just probably run through this one video there's a little apologize for a little bit of load time between the levels here I don't think I made an edit here just kind of run out of time it was almost three in the morning but I did want to get this video out and a little look around at one of the later dungeons and this one came out really well and it has quite a few surprises to it and then we I guess I can also show you um, this is actually in the northern area of the cradle another nearby dungeon to get you started 
and this is the frost dungeon and it as well has some caverns and uh, this one's a little more open but we won't go through that but after a little bit of that uh, it'd be no time uh, the other pick you up a little boat at least uh, get you out at sea and uh, get some of those commodities uh, to the market and you can start doing some trading and get you started uh, fighting some of these pirates and uh, uh, really uh, have a fun time exploring uh, the world of the world horizon um, hey anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed the video I'll try to get another part two video out uh, real soon I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it check us out on steam early access to world horizon.net uh, thanks guys and uh, be safe out there and until next time everybody uh, be safe and good hunting woohoo